Hey folks, so today we're taking a look at the Acer Nitro 5, a budget laptop which is squarely aimed at the lower end of the market, but with a focus on providing a decent gaming experience for those that need the portability. So why this laptop? Well, unlike the desktop space where AMD's made considerable inroads, when it comes to the mobile space, well, Intel still has a firm grasp on the CPU side, with Nvidia still being the go-to provider for non-integrated graphics. So with this AMD Ryzen and Radeon RX powered machine, it's something that's a little bit different from the norm. And the first thing I'll say is that it's a fairly striking machine, with a lot of faux carbon and some nice touches here and there, without being overtly garish or gamer like like. It looks good without being too flashy or in your face. The laptop's also fairly light at just over 2.5 kilos, but it doesn't feel flimsy or cheap. Of course, it's not going to be on par with metal bodied premium models, but due to the use of different textures on the lid and the keyboard, it doesn't feel like it's a cheaply made kids' toy either. On the left hand side, it's home to a lock port, Ethernet, USB 3.1, Type C, HDMI out, standard USB 3.0, and an SD card reader, while on the right hand side, we'll find an audio jack, two further USB ports, this time 2.0 though rather than 3, and the power input. And around the back we've got a huge area dedicated to air exhaust, which is great to see. And the front also houses some surprisingly good speakers for a laptop at this price range. The keyboard feels nice to use and it's simple and effective, offering a decent amount of comfort whether you're writing or gaming, with some red LEDs to match in with the Nitro aesthetic, although thankfully these can be turned off. The screen is a 15.6 inch 1920x1080 IPS panel running at 60Hz, although it's certainly not as vibrant as some that I've used, and sadly it doesn't support FreeSync. Overall, I really like how the Nitro 5 looks so far, good looks and some nice little touches of flair without the pitfalls of a typical gamer focused peripheral. But in the competitive world of laptops, decent looks has only got to get you so far, and it's what's inside the Nitro 5 that really piqued my interest. The CPU is a Ryzen 5 2500U, which is a 4 core, 8 thread, Zen based APU, similar to the Ryzen 5 2400G on the desktop, but with a base clock speed of 2GHz and a maximum all core boost of 3.6. The APU also comes coupled with Vega 8 graphics, yes, the same that you're going to find in the Ryzen 3 2200G on the desktop, and it's potent enough for lighter tasks and when applications cannot use or don't need the grunt provided of its discrete GPU. And this particular Nitro 5, it features 8GB of DDR4 memory. On the topic of discrete graphics, the Nitro 5 also comes with an RX 560X, a Polaris 21 based GPU featuring 1024 stream processors, 64 TMUs and 16 ROPs. And this is coupled with a dedicated 4GB of GDDR5 memory on a 128 bit bus. The GPU will boost up to around 1275MHz out of the box, while the VRAM runs at an effective speed of 6GHz. So a fairly decent budget offering then, 8 threaded CPU and a good GPU and enough dedicated graphics memory to tackle the latest games. Looking on the underside of the Nitro 5, we find two access panels, one of which is for system memory, and we can see we've got two slots here populated by two 4 gig DIMMs so we're running in dual channel and another panel which houses the standard 1TB 5400 RPM mechanical hard disk drive. Now as an overall package that might seem like a great choice, the specs are good, the laptop looks good, it's got good battery life, but here is where the review kind of takes a little bit of a detour, due to one key component, the hard drive. Now I understand, especially if you've never used an SSD, that you might think that this is going to be an unfair gripe, but I'll be brutally honest, having one drive, the standard 1TB mechanical drive, is both an OS drive and mass storage absolutely cripples this laptop. And I'm mentioning it because there are many of these Nitros available on Amazon and eBay at really tempting prices, but they all seem to forego an SSD. But be warned, the experience with only the mechanical storage is pretty awful, and I'd say that for any product in 2019, using only a 5400 RPM mechanical drive. That said, it's a really easy thing to remedy. Thanks to the glut of memory supply and lower demand, SSDs have come crashing down in price, in a quick scan over to eBay and bingo! A new 128GB M.2 SSD for 18 quid. That'll do nicely. 
so on the Nitro 5, installing an M.2 SSD is a tad more convoluted than changing the 2.5 inch hard drive, and it involves a lot of screw removal and gently prying open the unit, but once the SSD is installed and the OS transferred over, it becomes a completely different laptop, slick, fast, and just what you would expect in 2019 from any device. Really folks, if you're considering buying any computer or laptop, and you think you're going to manage without an SSD, then please just hold out till you can get the 20 quid or so for one. Even if it's just for an operating system drive, trust me, you'll get to thank me for that in the long run. So with a laptop now in what I would class as a fit for use state, let's take a look at using it. So firstly, if you're new to the scene of computers and you're a bit hesitant about AMD CPUs and GPUs, then I'll just say that there's absolutely no difference. With AMD's latest offerings, my current daily driver laptop has a Core i7 and a GTX 860M, and this AMD setup is equally as slick at opening programs, browsing files, surfing the web, and it's exactly the performance you would expect from an 8 threaded CPU clocking in at 3.6GHz i.e. very good with no strings attached. Ryzen is really leaps and bounds ahead of not only the previous generation of AMD processors, but also often better than similar tiered Intel offerings, so you are getting a lot of performance for the money. Now, for the longest time, laptop users have been at the mercy of laptop manufacturers rather than the chip manufacturer when it comes to driver support, and one area where, unfortunately, the Nitro 5 does fall a little behind is on driver support. If you've ever used an AMD graphics card on the desktop, you'll know how quickly they release drivers, enhancing the performance, tweaking and making sure that when a new game releases, your system is ready for it. So much so that now AMD actually recommends that you download the latest drivers for their mobile products directly from the Radeon website. And it seems here that Acer kind of missed the memo. Last year, a major update to the Radeon driver suite called Adrenaline 2019 was released, enhancing features, stability and performance. Now, in the slide deck for that release, AMD stated that the new driver was over 10% faster than the one a year previously. Not a bad increase year on year. So why is this important for the Nitro? Well, it doesn't ship with the latest driver which at the time of writing is 19.4.2. It's not even a fairly recent driver. No, what we get instead is a driver based on 17.7, .7, over 18 months out of date. Now, I will interject here and say that it absolutely still works, but there is something to be said for being able to use the latest graphics drivers on a laptop which is sold on its graphical prowess. With the 17.7 driver, you can access Radeon settings as normal, but a few features like Relive and Chill are not present in this package. That said though, there are workarounds for this, and third party tools like MSI Afterburner allow for game recording and statistics to be shown, but it would be nice if the full Radeon settings tool was functional, since on the desktop at least, I've been enjoying the benefits of the full Adrenaline package since release, and I've never really felt like going back to a third party application for any of those features. Now at the time of writing, there must be some kind of hiccup with the Nitro 5 and any other drivers other than the Acer supplied 17.7 one. As mentioned, when using the stock Acer supplied driver, the Radeon settings opens up fine, but when using anything else, the settings application times out and just simply won't open. The driver still works though, which is the main thing I guess. It's just not as functional or as easy as it should be. Other than the drivers though, one area where the Acer Nitro 5 does come up with the goods is with its included proprietary software. Now I've had some laptops in the past so encumbered with bloatware that a fresh install of Windows is almost essential. The Nitro comes with a few built-in software suites which are actually pretty useful and not at all resource intensive. Nitro Boost is a fairly simple fan utility, allowing you to customise the fan profiles. There's also the Acer Care Center, and this is just a simple utility that links you to the Acer support, can run a few diagnostics, and keep your machine error free. Good for someone who's maybe not as adept at PC maintenance, which is nice to see, as I do feel like this laptop is going to be bought by both tech savvy and non tech savvy punters. So it's a bit hit and miss on the software side then. A few good proprietary packages hampered by some gremlins on the driver side. But do those gremlins affect gaming in any way? Well, to test out the gaming performance, we're going to be doing two different things. First off, comparing it to the forced, unofficial update to the latest Radeon 19.4 drivers, to see if the lack of official driver support is hurting the performance, and secondly, comparing it to this, a Ryzen 2400G based desktop system with an RX 560 4GB in it. 
a very similar setup to the Nitro 5, but in desktop form. Now the desktop out of the box will obviously clock slightly faster than the laptop. The 2400G can boost up to 3.9GHz, while the desktop 560 features exactly the same architecture, but with an increase in the memory speed to 7GHz effective, and a 25MHz increase to the boost clock. So let's kick things off here with some synthetics with Firestrike, with the average of 5 runs shown. On the 17.7 .7 driver, the Nitro returns an overall score of just over 5,400, and a graphics score of 6,439, whereas on the 19.4.2 drivers, we see this result go up ever so slightly, and it kind of comes out to an increase of about 1%. Our desktop setup comes in a bit higher again, with the overall score being 5,825, with a graphics score of 6,807. Next up though, we've got an older title which still provides a good workout, especially for this lower end hardware. Rise of the Tomb Raider on a custom preset which is based on the medium preset, but with a few settings turned up to increase eye candy, and some scaled back to give a little bit more headroom, all running at 1080p. Here, the 17.7 .7 driver returns average frame rates of around 49 FPS in the built-in benchmark, while the 19.4.2 driver manages to eke out a few extra frames and returns 52 FPS. Again, these results were an average of 5 benchmark passes, and on the desktop using the same settings, we see a further increase to 54 FPS, which means around about a 5% gap between each. The newer Shadow of the Tomb Raider now, and again an example of an in-game benchmark at 1080p on the low and medium presets. Again, here we see the 17.7 .7 drivers trail behind, and the desktop takes the top spot again. On the low preset, the stock drivers return 35 FPS, while the unofficially updated drivers we see a jump to 38, an 8.5% 8 gap between driver versions. And on the medium preset, the benchmark returns 28 on 17.7, .7, and 30 FPS on the newer driver, a 7% increase. Finally, Battlefield 5, and the game that I've been playing most on the Nitro 5, 1920x1080 resolution with the medium preset, and the benchmark taken from the opening chapter's first three segments. On the 17.7 .7 drivers, we see averages of 46 FPS, while the 1% lows come in at 31, and things are actually greatly improved on 19.4.2, with an average and 1% lows coming in at 50 and 34, giving us an 8% boost on the averages, and an almost 10% boost on the 1% lows. So while it isn't quite a match for the desktop, it's still fairly clear that the older drivers are hampering performance. But at the end of the day, what do these results actually mean? Well, I'm intentionally being really hard on the Nitro 5 here, simply because I like it so much. It's a really great laptop, which just needs a little bit more OEM loving to unlock that performance it so obviously wants to deliver. So that 17.7 .7 driver is definitely hampering performance a little, which is a real shame, as I would expect a lot of users of this laptop are simply going to use the driver which Acer recommends. But at least if you are willing to bypass official drivers and lose out on some of the features that they support, then you can regain that performance to the tune of around 5% on older titles like Rise of the Tomb Raider, and closer to 10% on new titles like Battlefield 5. What I will say though, is that acoustically, the Nitro 5 is pretty great when it's under load. Regardless of which game or application I threw at it, those two fans do a really good job of keeping both the CPU and the GPU very cool, at reasonable volumes, which is great to see, and at the end of the day, for a laptop which can cost new under 599 or under 499 quid if you get a refurbished or ex-demo model, you are actually getting a lot of performance here, wrapped in a really nice package for your money. But would I recommend it? Well, yes, I certainly would. I've highlighted my biggest gripes I've got with a laptop, a slow hard drive in some configurations, and poor driver support, but really, that's it. I've mentioned that how for less than 20 quid I got a 128GB M.2 drive which completely eliminated the slow boot times, and if you're willing to go against Acer's advice, there are workarounds for the driver gremlins. So if you're willing to do that, you're going to be left with a really slick, great performing, cheap laptop. The Ryzen 2500U is an impressive CPU, and hopefully we're going to start seeing more Ryzen based laptops going forward, and with the RX 560X, it's great to again see a Radeon GPU in a mobile product. So I'm more than happy with this, sure it's not perfect, but there's so much to like about it, 
and since the niggles are not really unfixable, it's hard not to come away pretty impressed with this Ryzen and Radeon combo, especially if you're looking at an X demo or refurb model, which can set you back under 499 quid, even with the addition of an M.2 SSD. But what do you guys think of it? Is this all AMD laptop even worth a punt? Are any of you actually using the Nitro 5? As it's been a pretty good seller for Acer. And if you are, what are your tips and tricks to getting the most out of it? I'm going to keep investigating the driver situation, and if I can find a better solution, I'll be sure to keep you updated. But for now, I'll just say take care. And I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.